Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Shoujo's Bizarre Adventure. It is I, your host, Estella Luna. Hello, Denise. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. How are we all doing this week? Um, <coughs> I apologize. Um, I just got back from a con, <coughs> and I have COVID. Yay! Yay! Don't worry. I won't Please. get sick. I got sick! <laughs> Yay! It's not even con crud. It's worse than that. Yeah, and it's the con COVID. Con COVID. Virus. Con oh. COVID. Yeah. Because the last time I went to a con was actually, um, like, actually went to a con. I did go to Magfest for like partial, partial of the day. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't go for the full day. I just kind of went to say hi to friends. Like, I didn't like go go. Um, so this is the first con that I went to since 2020, which is. It's been four years. Like, it's legitimately yeah. been four years. Because I actually, I went to a con, uh, I went to SAC Anime, which was at the very beginning of January. So mm -hmm. I have not been to a con in four years. So, of course, you know, I go to a con for the first time and I get COVID. And, and no one else, I guess, in my room got COVID except for me. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> not even my roommate. Like oh, I'm like, great. Awesome. That's awesome. Like, I, mm -hmm. I remember... When I went to Anime Expo 2022, I was so surprised I didn't get sick. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know what happened. I I don't know what happened. You know, I I should have expected it. You know, this is a gaming convention. That's what PAX is. PAX PAX East is a gaming convention, um, mm -hmm. where a lot of like game developers go to. And you know, uh, and I was like, yeah, that sounds like a great time. But my problem is, is they're gamers, and you know what gamers are. Gamers, Disgusting. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're disgusting <laughs> um but did you have fun i I, I was keeping up with your with your twitter and all your updates oh i did it was really fun i got to play a lot of little demo games um i bought i did buy a game uh where is the i have this thing is annoying uh where did it go i have <laughs> a case for it somewhere it's called wait wait give me a second Cause I've been sick. The room's cleaned. a mess. <laughs> yeah, I haven't cleaned it because I've been like dying all week. Um, it's called Gunvolt Records. It's a, actually a rhythm game with cute anime oh. girls. So, oh, yeah, I got to play it when I was there. I played a demo and it was really fun. Um, so I bought that game. It was like only forty bucks, which, which I'm like for a PS5 game is pretty cheap. Oh, they had yeah. PS5 and they good. had it for Switch as well too. So I bought that. I, have to look um, into that. I got like, I got a new beautiful like stream thing. It's like a interface slash like stream deck mixed. Uh -huh. like, it's a GoXLR and stream deck like mixed together as one. It's like really cool. I was having problems earlier today with it though because I couldn't. I could <laughs> like Discord wasn't recognizing <laughs> it for some reason. And, oh. Um, I see. And I was like, what the, f what the, what the, what's going on? Why, why are you acting up? Because it's been working all week. So I, I was like, that was yeah. the first time I had problems. Oh, no. But that's probably because I haven't actually restarted my computer in like a few days. So that might be actually my fault. Um, and then like, I got that beautiful PC case, as you definitely saw. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. I'm so excited to finally like transfer my PC case. Cause, uh, my PC case, my PC is, I bought it in like 2020. So like the case is like almost four years old now um mm. and i've i've replaced parts in it but like it it needs a better case uh that's not full of like dead bugs <laughs> <laughs> a dead uh, bug cause, because okay here's the thing like i have cleaned my computer okay which you're supposed to do by the way if you don't clean your computer you need to clean your computer um i didn't know that for a while i didn't know you had to clean your pc uh, so there was a lot of dust buildup. Um, not that I did. I, I did clean it like after like the first year. Okay. So I have been regularly cleaning it. However, I didn't know like the front part of it popped off. And that's where um, all the, like all like the dead spiders were. Like there was so many dead spiders in there. It was a whole what? Oh my God. Yeah. Because, okay. Okay. I mean, to be fair, right. Like I, I lived in a basement and you know, like it wasn't mm. well, like not ventilated, but like, you know, like yeah, bugs from time to time. Like I live out kind of in a farmland like area at the time. 
And so, like, there would be bugs in my room sometimes. You know, I'd find a spider and stuff. Usually the cat was good at, like, getting that. But they, like, they found their way to my PC. So I need to replace the case anyways. So I got this beautiful Miku case. Like, it's so gorgeous. And if you guys haven't seen it, it's on my Twitter. It's, like, it's, it's, yeah. it's right there. It's so pretty. It's really pretty. Yeah, so I'm really excited to get that, like, all set up and stuff. But, yeah, no, it was a good time. Like, I got to talk to some developers. I got to talk to uh, uh, Japanime games um they're working on a like vtuber tcg which i'd love to <laughs> be a part of so we mm -hmm. wonk maybe <laughs> maybe because i gave him my business card which i made business cards specific sp specifically for this so that way i could be like hey <clears throat> you need a, a streamer to like review your game here you mm -hmm. go ha <laughs> ha yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, networking. Yeah, yes. networking. I, I, I mean, look, okay, I get to write it off on my taxes because I got to network there. So, mm -hmm. you know, like, it is, it's not all for nothing, right? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I got to, I, oh, I got to play the, the Pokemon TCG for the first time. I've never actually played the card game. Um, I used to collect uh, cards uh, as a kid, but I never actually played the game. I didn't know how to play it. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> um, but now I do. And that was really fun. But to get in that line was, so okay so they had like two separate pokemon booths there was mm -hmm. one so like the the one that you saw like the main one when you first came down to escalators had like they had one line to play the t uh the tcg game or the tcg right the, the trade trading card game game mm -hmm. the <laughs> tcg and they had another line on the other side to play uh like to do a pokemon battle in in scarlet and violet and both of those lines like the whole weekend were capped like every time we come back capped 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 so on sunday me and my buddy rastaban we we kind of like i was like okay we're gonna hover in the area that's what we're gonna do we're gonna hover around right so we like hovered <laughs> right by the line for the tcg just like we kept doing it and then finally, when they let people to go in, like, everyone flocked to it. We got in, <laughs> luckily. But, like, uh -huh. it was just, like, no wonder it was always capped because the moment they opened it up, people just swarm right in and capped again. And it was, it was <laughs> cool. Well, it, the thing is, is, like, after you played it, which it was fun, after you played it, you actually got to keep a deck of cards. Oh. Like, they just gave no you a, wonder, whole, yeah. a whole deck. <laughs> And they give you a little pin too. I got I got you a pin with um I forgot what this the the Pokemon like Pokemon's name is. It's the like little sushi guy in in Scarlet and Violet. Um, but I got a little pin with that. And then there was another Pokemon booth where you could go take a picture with Pikachu or Eevee. Which if you saw my little video, I did like a little dance with Pikachu. Yeah, Eevee, that was Pikachu. super cute. It was really cute. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, that was so cute um it was it was it was really cute and then the the helpers were so funny too they were so great and then they had another line to demo either scarlet and violet detective pikachu or pokemon um arceus and that i i demoed pokemon arceus and then you would get uh, a little like mini pack of pokemon cards that you can open up it came with like three cards uh -huh. Yeah, so cool. we got we got that as well too. So that was that was really fun. I think that was like my highlight. Um there was Mountain Dew was there as well too, of course. And they were <laughs> every Dew, day yes. they were giving away a an Xbox, which, you know, <laughs> that's a gaming oh. convention. Right, Mountain uh -huh. Dew. But what I didn't understand, okay, what I did not understand about PAX East was this we there was two booths in particular that were very strange to me, and I'm like, this this is at a gaming convention, and I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give you which ones three, were they? I, I need you to I need you to guess. I'm giving you I'm giving you three guesses on what these two companies were. Like a random sponsor? Like they they had booths. They weren't like I don't uh -huh. know if they were sponsors or not, but they are food related. Oh, was it? One okay, of them's a chain. my first guess is the the how do you pronounce it? Nishi or the Nissin Ramen? Nope. Mm -mm. No, nope. oh, dang it, because they have the gamer ramen. That's yeah, true. It's they caffeinated. Do have, they do have the gamer ramen, but it's, it wasn't. Yeah, I, I've been has, waiting to find it because I want to try it. To do. Nothing to do with gaming. <laughs> nothing to do with gaming. Oh. Uh. <laughs> One, I will give cream? you a hint. One of them is okay. a chain, 
Um, it what? is as okay. a, a chain of, I don't even want to say because it, it would give, there, there's only so many that do this. Um, it's a chain mm. that does breakfast. Breakfast chain. Hmm. Fast food? Yes. Cool. Well, it's kind of fast food. Uh, yes. Yes, it is fast food. McDonald's? No, not McDonald's. Jack in the Box? Nope. Okay. The first one was Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, and Dunkin' yeah, Donuts that's had East this Coast. crazy, this yeah. crazy booth where they were giving away so much stuff. Like that line <laughs> was so big, and like every time you yeah. walked by the booth, there would be a person out front handing out five dollar gift cards to Dunkin' Donuts. I awesome. kid you not, I have fifty dollars worth of <laughs> gift cards. <laughs> Or Dunkin' Donuts. Like, I have so many Dunkin' Donut gift cards. And it didn't matter if you were already taken one. He, they, they just didn't care. They're like, you'd be like, oh, I already have one. And it's like, no, here, here you go. Here, here you go. go. Here you go. Every time you walk by, here you go. Here you go. Here you go. It's just like free. It was, I mean, literally, it's just free, free food, honestly. Right? Yeah. And Take then the it. other, the other, <laughs> the other one, the other one. And you will literally, this one is so out of left field. Because at least Dunkin', I'm like, okay, uh -huh. coffee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I can understand like that kind of line. Uh, the yeah. other one, Idaho and potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> what the Idaho hell? and potatoes was at Pax East, and they were giving away <laughs> free potatoes. I would have never guessed I, that in a million years. I know. You're not even in the same coast. What the hell? <laughs> And like you could you like they had like a whole booth where they were like making potatoes like these cheesy potatoes and you can have them and you can eat them and I stuff mean, like that and they had potato like potato sounds and good were, but and they, and they were giving like these like individual packages like you know how you could get like the individual mac and cheese like that you can make in like mm -hmm. the microwave they were like that but potato versions and then like there was a giant like baked <laughs> potato that you could sit on oh i would have loved that <laughs> and i'm just like what is this what does potatoes have to do with gaming? I don't understand. Like, it was really funny, but I was just, like, so confused because they were just giving away products, and I was like, I, like, I, look, listen, you know, I'm, I'm from the West Coast, okay? I'm, I'm a West Coast girly, you know, and, and I always get Idaho and potato, like, packages because they're cheap, and, like, they're, like, you know, they're, they're, they're good. All you do is add some water, mm -hmm. you know? But, like, <coughs> it was just so random i was just yeah i was just i don't know i was just like what huh but why why potatoes i just i just didn't understand I, <coughs> yeah that one i would have never guessed <coughs> oh there was some controversy though at pax east this year though oh really yeah so there was this booth called i am so sorry my cat is just she is just meowing away hold on give me <laughs> un momento okay. here she just wants to talk about the potatoes too <laughs> oh, poor kitty <laughs> i just stuck her out of my room so that way she can she, I th she wanted out but anyways okay <clears throat> so there was this booth called kitty again or Kitty, Kitty, Kitty Games. And mm -hmm. everyone sat there and were like, what? What is this? Like, they, like, no one knew what it was. Like, no clue. Mm -hmm. No one knew. Right? Because it's like, well, I've never heard of Kitty Games or Kitty or whatever. Right? Uh -huh. And Kitty, yeah. so someone looked it up and found out that they were just some company from like Saudi Arabia. And they had a booth? And they had a booth. Oh, okay. And, and people were kind of, like, confused because it's, like, w what was, like, the point? And, and, and like, with, with Idaho and Potato, maybe kind of Duncan and Kitty Games, people were, like, so we're just letting anyone have a booth at PAX East. Uh-huh, yeah. Right? Like, we're just letting, because, like, like they, they have nothing to do with gaming. Like, like literally mm -hmm. zero, there are zero things to do with gaming. Right. And so people were like, so are we so desperate for people to fill up these booths that you're just like letting anybody in? Right. 
Um, yeah. Or that you don't care about who comes as long as they have money, right? That's and true, yeah. and people were like kind of upset with that. And and like at the same time, I do understand because like PAX was at a weird time this year. And next year they're they're it's going to be in May mm -hmm. instead of March. Thank God. <clears throat> the weather was horrid. Um, Boston is not fun when it's cold. Yeah, yeah. But however. The weekend before, there was the, the gaming development convention, the GDC, okay. uh -huh. happened the week before. So, like, all the big companies were there, right? Because the big companies that were at PAX this year were, like, Square Enix. But it, was, it really wasn't just Square. It wasn't Square Enix. It was them promoting their new expansion, pa like, expansion for Final Fantasy XIV, so, mm -hmm. like, it wasn't even, like, fully just square. It was just kind of, like, they were just promoting the expansion. So it was, like, I would have really loved to see, like, an actual booth from Square and not just, like, Final Fantasy fourteen because I don't play that. Yeah. Um, and then, like, Pokemon, right? Their Pokemon was mm -hmm. there. And some other, like, bigger, like, gaming was there. Like, they had Baldur's Gate and stuff like that. But, like, I would really love to see other, like, companies, like, Epic Games, you know, who make... Fortnite and Fall Guys. Oh, and, damn. They and... weren't there? No, they weren't there. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of like Nintendo? Other... Nintendo was there, but it was Pokemon specific. Just Pokemon. Oh, yeah, it was like Pokemon so specific. Yeah, exactly. Like it was just like, it feels like it was just like the branches of these bigger yeah. companies rather than than like the was actual Sega companies. There no? no, Sega was not there. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, Sega, right? what the hell are you doing? I know. <laughs> And so, and so, like it because it happened the week before, and it's a, it's in California. It's, I think it's in the Bay Area. That okay. they might have not wanted to go from the Bay Area to like Boston within Maybe, yeah. like a short amount of time. So they just decided not to go. Uh, and then the week after that is Anime Boston. So Anime Boston's happening right now. Oh yeah, I've seen some manga licenses. Yeah. So shojos, shojos, yeah, we love to see it. Um, but it just is in in a weird like packed time of like the attendance probably could have been higher. It was still packed. I will say that it, it wasn't like short of any, you know, like attendance. It just like it's in a weird time of like right after another big gaming convention and right before Anime Boston. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is supposed to be like an industry thing. And another thing that happened that like <laughs> that kind of made me upset was that so there was supposed to be so I signed up to go, I RSVP'd to go to a Twitch networking party. Okay. Right. Sounds okay. great. Mm -hmm. I made those business cards for it. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna network with people. Oh my god, I've never networked like that before. Oh my god, I'm gonna go to this party, I'm gonna network my little booty off. I'm gonna be like, yeah, I'm a VTuber. <laughs> I get that I don't look like my VTuber. I'm sorry, but like, here it is, yeah, look yeah. how cute my little business cards are. And then a few hours before it, I get an email saying that they had combined the party with a sonic boom party and we had to like re-sign up for it so we re-signed up for it it was fine it was fine uh -huh. yeah yeah we get there and it was loud as hell everyone was oh. like super hardcore drinking it was very party party right and i'm uh -huh. like yeah this is not what i was expecting I signed up I for just the, wanted to network. the Twitch. Well, because it's, it's a Twitch <laughs> yeah. networking party. It was, that's what it was supposed yeah. to be. And something must have happened to where they like combine the two because like, uh, according to my roommates who usually go to this, usually like industry people are there. Like you see people who mm. are industry people are there and you get to talk to them. However, yeah, yeah. there was no one who was industry there. It was just like a party. And I was like, look, okay, I, look, I, I can party. I can, I can throw it back. I can do whatever, right? However, I was not, <laughs> I was not ready yeah. to, to party. I was here to network is what I was expecting. I wanted to like network with people. I wanted to be like, hey, my name is Stella Luna. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm a VTuber. Uh, this is my Twitter. <laughs> like, look at this nice little QR code yeah. I got on there. You know, I saw, oh, I did see a TikTok this one time, a little side tangent. 
saying like what is it up with old people and their obsession with qr codes and i was like what do you mean what does the gen alpha not use qr codes (laughs) i don't know it was like it was like it wasn't even gen alpha it was just like it was like someone who's like 20 and i was sitting there and i'm like what do you mean i was like do you know how lazy people are so quickly yeah. yeah, I was like, do you know how lazy people are? You think they're going to sit there and they're going to type out every single letter? They're mm-hmm. so lazy. If you can, like, make it a shorter process, if you can make it so they can, like, skip a step and they don't accidentally mess up typing it in the search bar, by all means. I just, like, I didn't understand. It was it was so weird because I'm like, I used QR codes the whole weekend. What do you mean? Like, yeah. I, there were Dude, so many if companies. You have a, mm-hmm. If you have a unique name, like, new stuff, it's much easier to be like, hey, scan this, instead of having to be like, N-E-U-Z-E. It was so weird. It was so weird. But yeah, that was kind of like QR my... codes for the win. Yeah. That was kind of my weekend, honestly. Um, <clears throat> and then my friends would also take my business cards and just leave them around everywhere. Oh, but I will, I will say this. This was really funny, too. Yeah, yeah. So... I got my badge from a friend um, who was an exhibitor. So I had a badge that said special guest on it. And I had several people throughout the weekend being like, oh, you're a special guest. What do you do? And I'm like, (laughs) I'm a VTuber. (laughs) Yeah, but I wasn't there as like a guest. Okay. I'm I'm, I'm a sham. I'm I'm a fake. You were the special guest. (laughs) I wasn't a special guest. No, I wasn't. I didn't. Pax. Pax denied me of the of those influencer badge. They have denied me of that that freaking badge that I applied for because they Shame. I don't know why. Actually, I have no idea why they 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 did it. But like I got a special guest badge and people were asking me. They're like, oh, what do you do? <laughs> like, um, uh, I got this Elucent blanket, like a Neopets blanket, uh-huh. um, yeah, yeah. like the fairy Elucent. I got this blanket, and uh, as I was buying it, the guy who's checking checking like me out, checking you know for the blanket, not checking me out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, he, <coughs> he he was like, hold on. <coughs> he was like, oh, oh, you're a special guest, and I was like, oh, y- y- yeah, and he was like, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm a, I'm a VTuber, and he was like, oh, he's like, we, you know, he's like, we're always up to doing merch for like people, even VTubers, like we haven't, I don't think they've done VTuber merch yet, but like they were really interested in it. Like mm-hmm. he's like, I have my business card, and I was like, here you go, <laughs> here, here you go, uh, here's, here's that, there you go, uh, yeah, we, we can, we can talk sometime, it'll be great, yeah. So, yeah, that was really funny. I had a few conversations like that. And, like, same thing. It was, like, there was this, um, uh, we were sitting at a table eating. And there was this, uh, guy who we, like, who came, I don't remember if he, we came, oh, no. No, he came and sat down at the table. And, because, like, there was a ton of tables. And, like, you're just going to have to sit with people that you didn't know. Because, like, there's not, you know, like, there's not enough room for everyone to get their own individual table. Right. Mm-hmm. But this guy was cosplaying uh, Joseph Joestar from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, specifically old uh-huh. man Joseph. And okay. and I was like, oh, my God, I was like, I really like your cosplay. You're cosplaying old man Joseph. And he's like, oh, yeah. And so we started talking about Jojo's. And then he saw he saw my my badge. And I, he was like, yo, are you and he's like, oh, what do you do? And I was like. I'm a streamer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's really weird. I it's it was the first time I've gone to a con as like of officially like as a VTuber. And it yeah. was just weird because like when people ask you what you do, it's like, oh my god, it, like do I do I just dox my face and say, Yeah, I'm a VTuber. And it's just like now they yeah. know what I look like, you know? It's like it's really weird because I don't know like how to introduce myself anymore either, because like I used to like I had a different name. And now mm-hmm. I go by like a completely different name, but my friends call me a different name. And then it's like, it's like, I, I don't know what to say anymore. It's a very awkward situation. <laughs> I can imagine. But yeah, that was, that was my experience. Um, but, uh, you know, some other news though. Um, so I kind of told you a little bit about this, but uh, so there is a new anime that's coming out uh, in, in, like January of 2025, I think. Um, it's oh, okay. in the winter season, and it's an anime called Metalist, and it's an ice skating anime. 
And basically how I kind of, I found out about this anime was I was scrolling on TikTok and I was just like scrolling through, you know, and stuff, and you know, just doom scrolling because I'm sick. And I come across the PV for this anime. And basically it's about a, I want to say he's either in his like late twenties, early thirties. That's what he looked like. He looked like a, Mm -hmm. like an older, not older, but like he looked like an adult man. He's an adult man and he works in an ice skating rink. And there is this girl and this like little girl who's probably, I would say she's probably about 10. And, Mm -hmm. you know, he decides to coach her, right, to be an ice skater. And her fam, like her mom doesn't want her to ice skate because she doesn't want her to get injured. And, you know, like, but he coaches her anyways, right? Like cute little anime, cute little Mm -hmm. looking anime. And I've got a bone to pick with you. You're an ice fans. I got a I got a bone to oh, I got no. a bone to pick uh-huh. with you. Because I open up those comments and I look and knowing you're an ice fans, I'm like, oh they're gonna compare this, aren't they? Aren't they're going to compare this to Yuri and Ice. And Lord and uh-huh. behold, there were the comments about Yuri on Ice. And I'm like sitting there and I'm like, how it was like comments that were like were like, oh, so like Yuri on Ice, but without all the greatness. So straight what? Yuri on ice. So Yuri on ice, but with lollies. So oh, like with oh. so like Yuri on ice. Oh, what? I'm not even fucking joking. That's what it said. That is what it said. That's what those comments were saying. And it, that is insane. It is in, It is literally so insane. Because like I'm looking at this and I'm like, first of all, Yuri on ice figure skating existed before yuri on ice oh yeah like the, it's a legitimate real fucking sport i'm sorry for uh my cursing there but i it, it really pissed me off because i'm like it it has existed before your on ice like oh i'm sorry no anime can exist ever again about ice skating it's got to be mm-hmm. only your on ice or or even comments that were like so they'll give us this anime instead of a second season of Yuri on Ice or give us Ice it's Adolescence. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, this isn't even the same animation studio. Oh my God. <sighs> I'm like, that. if you're going to be mad at anyone, be mad at fucking MAPPA. Oh my God. Well, yeah, that's the, that's the company they should be mad at, not, not this. Not some <laughs> random <laughs> ass company that hasn't done anything. They literally have done nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and the other thing that like really grossed me out, that was like, Oh, <laughs> you're an ice, but with lollies. And I'm like, they're children. Hello? They're yeah, literally yeah. like actual children. You Do know, we not know what I, lollies are? Like, when, lo- I, when I saw, when you made me watch the, the teaser trailer, mm-hmm. especially after all, everything that happened with Oshinoko that we talked about in the last episode, I kind of assumed that they might have made it that way. Yeah. Just, you know. Uh, but I mean, like, this just looks pretty much like a sports slice of life series with, you know, the older character being the mentor. Like, yes. I don't see anything weird with it. I doubt the series is actually weird, but I kind of had a feeling that it might have brought, like, the weirdos out. Well, the thing is, is I don't even think it's, like, the weirdos. I just think it's people... I think it's Yuri and Ice fans who like are like, oh my god, like they they just are so delusional. Okay, and so I love uh-huh, Yuri yeah, and Ice. Yeah. By the way, I'm not. This is not. Yeah, shitting. I love it as well. It's so it, good. It's, it's not me shitting on Yuri and Ice itself, right? But I feel like the fans that have kind of remained are like the delusional ones. I'm not gonna lie, because there's yeah, yeah. and there's other reasons for that that I'm gonna bring up in a second. Because this is a call out for Yuri and Ice right now. I'm call <laughs> I'm calling you bitches out right now, um, like. Because, like, lollies are, are characters that look and act like children and behave like children, however, are usually, like, a thousand years old. They're usually over mm-hmm, the age mm-hmm. of 18, and so they're basically legal. That is a child. <laughs> that is actually yeah, one, a child. Metalist is a child, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she, she, th- this girl, these girls are actual children. So that's weird. Yeah. Also saying it's straight Yuri on ice is also weird because that's implying that the adult male character and the child will end up dating. That's weird. Right. And look, 
I, I this series is a seinen. It is a seinen. However, okay. I've looked into it. No weird vibes whatsoever. What like whatsoever? I think it's just a genuine like wholesome story, which is like well, knowing Kodansha and how they handle seinen, they do it differently than like um, Square Enix. Mm-hmm. So their seinen magazine is typically marketed towards like um i'm guessing it's in the same magazine as skip and loafer mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and blue period so it, it is like a statement for the general adult audience that just wants something more like and, and, and not refined but you know you, you get like the artsy series in that magazine what's well, like so sweet, like the stuff that would lightning <laughs> yeah yeah where it's like it's nothing weird it's just like you know like a like a mentor and 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 you know a coach coaching a child like this is yeah like, this is like I mean, if free was about mako teaching children yeah like that's much. what this mm-hmm. is it's it, it literally what it is and it just like it made me upset because it just like this manga artist like i read into it this manga artist wanted to create this manga however they wanted to authentically represent ice skating so they went out and took lessons. <laughs> oh my god. Like they did it themselves to take lessons to learn yeah. the terminology, to learn what it's about, like to like understand. So they did it themselves. And I feel like it's so disrespectful to just like boil down ice skating to Yuri on ice. Like yeah. because like and look, okay, it goes farther than this because this happened a few months ago, um, maybe like a year ago. I don't remember. I'm like, time is weird. But so Mr. Underhill is super into ice skating. He, he really mm-hmm. likes ice skating. He watches it. You know, we watch the Olympics. We watch the ice skating Olympics, right? And mm-hmm. there is a guy from Japan uh, named Yuzuru Hanyu, I believe is his name. <coughs> if I'm wrong... Don't come at me. Um, I'm, I suck with names. And he, like, a lot of people believe that he was, that Yuri and Yuri and Ice was modeled after Yuzuru. And okay. that, that, like, he was the inspiration. There's, like, a few of them mm-hmm. that had, like, ins- real-life inspirations, right? And so people believe that Yuzuru was the inspiration for Yuri, right? And so okay. this last Olympics was his very last time competing after he's retired now right he is in his late 20s and that's about the time most ice skaters uh figure skaters retire right and Mm -hmm. he went against this guy named nathan chen who is from the u.s right really powerful skater right uh, Yuzuru is a much more emotional st- skater, so he puts a lot more emotion into his skating, whereas, like, Nathan is someone who's a lot more, like, technical, right? Okay. Um, and you can even tell by, like, their costumes as well. Like, Yuzuru is a very, like, has very, like, beautiful, like, elegant, you know, costumes with rhinestones and sequences, and then Nathan wears very masculine things that are not very fashionable i'm not gonna lie he's his fashion is not super great i will admit that however yuzuru lost to nathan right and 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 yuzuru tried to do something that i don't think has ever been done before and he didn't land it um which took points away obviously right and Mm -hmm. nathan like just skated like crazy um and nathan won and the fans went crazy. Because with Yuri on Ice, there ended up being a large surge of new fans to ice skating, right? Which is all, like, great. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, there was this resurgence of people interested in figure skating. However, people started treating the figure skaters like they are fictional characters oh. in a series. So they started attacking Nathan Chen for beating Yuzuru. And it was just a shit show all over Twitter. Just a shit show of people just attacking Nathan and being so upset that Yuzuru lost. And I'm like, I'm sorry, honey. I'm sorry. But like, this is real life. Like, use, like, this isn't a, this isn't written. It's not 
fiction, you know, where like uh, Yuzuru like completes it. He did it anyways. He lost, right? He lost his very last, you know, uh, it's not match. His, his last time skating, right? Well, yeah, yeah. professionally, right? And people attack Nathan. And then it gets worse. So with the announcement of his retirement, he also announces that he is getting married, right? And he gets married oh, to I this beautiful woman, right? Yeah, yeah. And a few months later, I'm scrolling Twitter, and I see this image that Yuzuru had divorced his wife because of the harassment she was getting. Oh, Fans no. were harassing her. And there's, there's, two, there's like a couple layers here that kind of are really concerning. Is First of all, it could be a matter of like people who were in love with him are angry, you know, that she's married to him. The other thing that like really like instantly struck my mind is that because people associate him with Yuri so much, they are mad that he married a woman. Yeah. That's the other thing that comes into my mind, right? Um, obviously, that is speculation. Th those things are speculation. However, the harassment she received is real. Well, yeah. I, I mean, it wasn't not figure skating, but, you know, another Japanese athlete. The, he's one of the players for the Dodgers, I believe. Mm -hmm. He announced that he's in a relationship, too. I did land on that side of tiktok when people were going like oh my god i can't believe he's off the market and who is this person and like people started going um through an investigation like who is he interacting with on twitter oh uh, this comedian has they like, talked about him and dude just let them be like like let them live you don't and... need to it, it almost reminds me like idol culture just seeping through other Yes. Into like other worlds. Like, I don't think just because an athlete is attractive, you don't have to. I mean, first of all, idols deserve more mm -hmm, respect mm -hmm. as well. Yes. But it's just this crazy um, idol like, <coughs> not even fascination, it's like more of an obs like parasocial obsession. Yes. That is seeping through other, into other. Um, Aspects. worlds i guess <laughs> yeah into into other into other worlds other like yeah because like sports, sports and, and... and idol culture they're so different <laughs> yeah they are and it's just it's just crazy because it's like well it's, it's because they're still celebrities though yeah in their own mm. right right like they're still celebrities i mean we even see it with like taylor swift fans and then when it comes to whoever mm -hmm. taylor's dating like, they, they have to get the approval of the fan base. Oh, and the fandom, yeah. That's weird. Like, that is 100% weird. And, yeah. and, like, Yuri and Ice fans are no exception to this, right? Because it's like, there's a, there's a subsection of the fandom who caused Yuzuru to divorce from his wife. That's insane. That is, that insane. is insane. Because people treated him like a fictional character right mm -hmm. and these are not fiction these are real people they're not fictional mm -hmm. characters they are absolutely not and so you don't get to sit there and scream and whine and, and bitch and moan about your favorite figure skater losing and attacking the other person who won that's like that's first of all bad sportsmanship however they don't oh, yeah. need mm -hmm. they don't need you to defend them Yuzuru was like, yeah, that happened, you know, and he, he moved on, right? Yeah. Like, he, he, try, he tried to do something crazy. It didn't happen. You know, it would have been cool if it did, you know, but, like, I, I guarantee he's not walking away being upset that he lost, you know? It's, mm -hmm. it's time for him to, like, you know, pass on the crown to somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I find crazy about now learning how the... Yuri on Ice fans reacted to Metal Is. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like if you fell in love, I mean, obviously, you're falling in love with the series because of the story and characters. Yeah. But if you specifically like the ice skating portion of the story, wouldn't you want to support other series that feature ice skating? Because it's, they're not very common. No. 
Not at all. And I, I'm like, I'm excited for this series because I, I love series like this. I love mm -hmm. like the the kind of like the older like mentor towards and having like the younger person, right? Like one of my favorite yeah, yeah. series is like Moribito, uh, which is like a very obscure anime that like no one's ever heard about, where it's about this like 29, 30 year old woman who is a bodyguard for a prince because his own father is trying to like end his life and you know she has to protect him and like they they create like this really like wonderful bond that's not creepy at all it's just like a, a very good like mentor like motherly bond and like mother son kind of bond familiar bond right <clears throat> and that's what the series is giving to me is it a f like a familiar bond um yeah you know it's also what i <laughs> It's why I was really upset the way that Usagi Drop went. <laughs> because like Usagi yeah. Drop, I I watched that series, like I watched the anime and I went, Yeah, that's great. Oh my god, this is so good. And then I found out what happened in the anime. And then they made it weird. <laughs> and I and mm. I you know, but like if we're talking strictly anime and pretending that nothing else happened in the manga, I, I like I like that like the setup was fine. You know, and so I'm okay with having this story. It's just like, it's just annoying because it almost feels like, I don't know how to explain it because it's like, it feels like certain fans. It, it, to me, it kind of seems like they want to gatekeep. Yeah, like, <laughs> like figure skating just for like Yuri on the ice. That's it. In a way, it also feels like very like I don't know how to put it. Like the the feeling that I'm feeling, and I'm, I don't know how to put this into like words. Like a so I'm gonna try. Complex, try no, not quite. Like I'm gonna try my best to explain this, but it, it okay. feels almost like they are putting the expectation on figure skating to be gay. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, that's what it feels like, right? It's like, well, it's not Yuri and Ice, it's not gay, so I don't want anything to do with it. Which is kind it's of... It's almost like they wanted to fit their own stereotype of what figure skating, I guess, should be. Yeah, that's kind of like what it mm -hmm. feels like. It, it does kind of, it does feel like that. And it just feels like, it feels icky and gross um, in that way, because it's like, Yuri and Ice... <laughs> like I said, figure skating, it has existed long before Yuri and Ice, right? Mm -hmm. And we also, we don't even know if there's going to be any romance in it. And I, if there is, more than likely, it's, it, I don't know if you saw in the PV, but there was a guy with like dark hair and he had sunglasses. Um, mm -hmm. It's probably going to yeah. be with him and the coach. Uh, because Maybe, like, yeah. because that guy, I'm going to, he's probably the older brother of the, mm -hmm. the girl with the black hair and yellow eyes because he has yellow eyes too um he was hot as fuck uh, <laughs> but like i mean they both were okay they both were but like there's probably gonna be maybe some tension between them you know and the fans are gonna go mm -hmm. crazy and stuff like that but like it's just like weird it's like to assume that like oh so it's gonna be you're in ice but straight or you're on ice without all the greatness and i'm like what's the greatness <laughs> what is the greatness so you figure skating isn't great unless it's gay is that what you're yes. saying because that's yeah. what that tells me I'm so I'm sorry, but like, like it's great to have LGBT stories, and Yuri and Ice did a lot for that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, stories did. that involve like past stories that involve LGBT, where they have like sports and stuff, can also exist on their own without any sort of romance either. Because like mm -hmm. it's not even like me going, well, it's okay if it's straight. How about no romance? Oh my god, I love things without romance sometimes, okay? Like, you know, sometimes it's exhausting to see, like, the back and forth all the time. Sometimes I want to see it. Sometimes I'm like, you know what? I just want to watch a, a nice, wholesome series without a little romance. Yeah. So, yeah, that was that was something that <laughs> kind of made me <laughs> I mad. I never guessed that. Oh. I know, I know. That's why I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to tell you when, when we're, we're recording. Um, yeah, you know, but speaking about well, ch good. children, <laughs> you, so did you watch, uh, Quiet on Set? Yeah, I watched all four episodes. I and also then... watched all four episodes. 
you know, have been keeping up with like the discourse that mm-hmm. has happened and you know oh. mm-hmm. I I feel like for like us millennials, like we grew up watching those shows. So yeah. it it has taken a while to like process everything. But mm-hmm. at the same time, like I remember hearing about how weird Dan Schneider was like 2016, 2017. Yes. When a few people on YouTube were like brave enough to like actually make videos on that. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. Dan Schneider would copyright claim them and get the videos removed. Yep. And the reason why I would find out about that is because they would re-upload the videos and be like, hey, this got taken down. <laughs> we don't care. Like, here's the video back up again. But like, it's been like a losing battle with people trying to expose Dan Schneider and then his company just trying to keep everything hush-hush. Yeah. But with, um, did you ever get to read Janet McCurdy's? memoir no i didn't ever get to read it or listen to the audiobook of it i oh, okay. i want I listen to. to the audiobook um i have heard bits of it though and it is good but very tragic hearing her like retell everything yes well it's really sad because it's it's there was so many things where i'm like you know as a kid or as a teenager because some of the stuff did happen, like some of those shows that come on when I was more of a teenager, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I had, I have younger siblings, right? I have like a sister who's like uh, five years younger than me and then a brother who's like seven, right? Mm-hmm. So they were more of the target audience for things like iCarly and like Victorious. So like yeah. I would catch a few episodes, like iCarly was in that cusp for me, um, but okay. like Victorious was kind of like that hard like cut off, right? Where I'm like, I'm mm-hmm. too old for this, right? Yeah. However, I watched, uh, like, I watched Drake and Josh and Zoe 101 and The Amanda mm-hmm. Show, right? And I remember, yeah. like, I, I, I don't really remember Drake and Josh being as weird, um, but that's probably because Drake and Josh main characters are both guys, right? They're yeah. Dudes, and I, it, from mm-hmm. what the documentary was kind of like, uh, like implying, and they were talking about, was that Dan more or less had it was more against women and girls it didn't matter if you were born a girl it didn't fucking matter to him right Mm -hmm. if you were a guy he didn't he didn't touch you right like it it, like no interest at all and like especially when it came to like josh because like i know josh defended dan a few years ago Um, however um i will say that like more than likely dan saw josh as a like a younger version of himself. I think so. Yeah. I, I really think because, because like Dan, like knowing Dan's background and acting, being like on shows where he's like the, the fat friend, the funny mm-hmm. fat friend, that's kind of what Josh ended up being, the funny fat friend, right? And yeah. he probably had a lot of sympathy for that, for, for Josh. So of course, like he, you know, was really close to both Drake and Josh because like, you know, who was the first person that called Drake after his incident? You know, it was Dan Schneider and asked mm-hmm. him, you know, and, you know, he it was the first person that that uh, Drake had officially told outside of his like immediate family. Right. And, you know, that's that's a tactic to try and like get, you know, people not, not to realize. Right. But things mm-hmm. on, like iCarly were really weird. Right, like iCarly, Zoe 101. There were some things where it's like it just felt well, kind of like, weird. I grew up with all the all that, and then I went over to the Amanda show. Yeah, like I remember things like if you just heard some of the jokes, some of them just were not. They weren't <laughs> trigger. They weren't triggering like natural <laughs> laughter from me, but they would mm-hmm. always put a laugh track. Yeah. So like. As a child, as a child watching that, it's like you're getting conditioned to think, What's thinking funny? like those jokes are funny. Yeah, well, like uh, and, Penelope. Yeah, I, that Penelope one, taint, and I was like, it was taint. I thought it was T A T. Yeah, well, like, I always taint. thought it was taint. Yeah, yeah, Penelope taint, not taint. I'm like, oh, oh, that's that's a oh, that's that, a, that is. And it's not even, like, a butt joke, either. That's, like, a weird no. one, right? Like, I, like, butt jokes, I feel like, for kids are very funny, right? Like, mm-hmm. butt. Like, don't say ass, but you say, like, <coughs> you're, like, oh, like, oh, that's their butt, you know? It's, like, kind of funny, mm-hmm. right? Like, for kids, right? Because um, butts are kind of funny, let's be real. 
but like taint is weird that's that's weird yeah I... it's just it's really weird <laughs> and it's... um like the amount of like kind of um <clears throat> like how do you say it like that <laughs> not getting to well we are not even one type like ejaculation yeah. jokes and this happened like amanda show so we won a one yeah victorious like anytime anything was squirted on a girl's face yes oh Dude. my god like what the hell yeah i'm like i there was some like because they showed some clips and i was like oh yeah oh my god <clears throat> like i didn't even i didn't even like i mean okay because some of the things that did make me like uncomfortable right like as, yeah. like, as a kid mm -hmm. and and you know like this is probably because i'm also like ace as well too right like it was some of the stuff like I, I, that i could read is it, it was sexual but like obviously as a kid i don't know what sexual really means yeah, but like it we still did, made we me had no idea yeah you know and something that made me really sad that somebody had brought up in a tiktok was that while of these kids on set were getting groomed we as an audience were secondhand groomed and yeah. i was like that's fucked up and they're not wrong. Like, I don't think mm -mm. they're wrong. I think that's the correct opinion to have. Because I'm like, we were groomed into thinking those jokes were okay. And imagine, mm -hmm. imagine how many of us growing up made jokes that were not okay, right? Or, or had people in our lives make these jokes. And we thought it was totally okay because, the, you know, our shows said it was okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was like, I, you know, like we grew up in the in the time of the internet where we had chat rooms as well too you know and like there is lots of kids going in the chat rooms talking and you know and talking to strangers on the internet and and stuff like mm -hmm. that and imagine how many of the red flags we did not see because we grew up with some of these shows and it's like it's 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 totally it's totally not like totally fucked but the thing is they didn't happen all the time i don't necessarily mm -hmm. blame parents for not knowing because like if they had watched part of the show and they're like yeah everything seems fine right and so they would just sit the kid in front and then they go off and do you know stuff like that right but yeah, then it would be yeah, ever yeah. so often those things would be put in it wasn't like an all-time thing right well like do you happen to see the interview that Dan Schneider posted himself <laughs> on his YouTube channel? Oh my god, is it the recent one? Yeah, the one where the an, one of the adult actors on iCarly interviewed him or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I didn't get to see Where he all said of it. that like he, his jokes were meant for children and there was nothing inappropriate about, about them. Like, what do you mean, sir? What, what do you mean? Yeah. Like... It's, like, come on. Like, even like the female writers of your show came out and said you knew that these jokes were sexual in nature and they were for adults and you still put them in the ariana grande ones were oh my, i remember horrifying. seeing those clips like years ago and i was disgusted because yes. i i didn't grow up watching victorious i had no, no idea me neither but those this yeah they were really bad. Like, those were so mm -hmm. bad. Like, those were so in your face. And, like, I feel like Victorious was the worst one out of all of them. I think so, too. And, yeah. like, Sam and Cat, maybe. Mm -hmm. But, like, Victorious, definitely. I feel like Victorious and Zoe 101 were, like, well, and I, Carly, like, that. Because I feel like in the Amanda show is, like, where he started to test the waters. I think right? so, yeah. He started to test the waters in the Amanda show. And then, you know, as it went on, probably didn't do as much in Drake and Josh. Because, like I said, I don't remember too much from Drake and Josh that was, like, really sus. Um, mm -hmm. mo mostly because our main characters are men or boys. Yeah. And then Zoe 101, like, the difference between Drake and Josh and Zoe 101, which those aired around the same time, mm -hmm. were yeah. almost, like, night and day when it came to it. And it's, like, it was mm -hmm. so weird because, like, I also kind of noticed something was that, like, Nickelodeon this is gonna sound really fucking weird but like in Dan Schneider shows he the actresses always had similar body types he, they did right mm -hmm. and I understand it's the 2000s but like there was just something like they like the from the outfits they were wearing 
to like well because like alexis uh who played um i don't remember her name on zoe 101 i, I, either, know, I know she was like yeah was i know she nicole? was in zoe i think 101. her name was nicole on the mm-hmm. show like she was only like i think 12 or 13 mm-hmm. on that show playing like a high school student right and it's just like there were so many like really weird things on that show that were just kind of like I like that just kind of like made me uncomfortable, even though like the concept of, of the show, you know, like as a kid, you're like, yeah, that sounds great. You know, like mm-hmm. going to the school, like it's like basically a college in high school, though, you know, like and I'm like, oh, I want to yeah. go to a dorm and that sounds great. You know, you know, what I, I also mm-hmm. like talking about like the girls bodies in the show. Yeah. And like the outfits, I feel like it conditioned like our generation into thinking that we had to grow up faster than we needed to. Yeah. Because those outfits, like, honestly, were stuff that, you know, middle school girls and high school girls should not have been wearing, like, mini skirts and form-fitting tops and stuff like that. Those were, like, things that, you know, (laughs) young women were wearing back then. Yeah. Well, and and the thing is, is that when, because I know, I know I've, I've seen people talk about how you know, like clothes, you know, like shouldn't be sexualized. And and the unfortunate part is, is like, while I do agree, it is not a world we live in and people are malicious. And, and in this context, they were putting them in these outfits to sexualize them. That yeah. is a huge thing, right? And, and like they're all, they, you know, the clothing does come with some, depending on the clothing, does come with some sort of like implications, right? Um, mm-hmm. You know, like one of the things would be like uh, bunny suits, right? Like, like we're talking bunny suits, mm-hmm. Playboy bunny suits, right? I've seen, you know, a lot of like people, like a lot of minors cosplay with bunny suits, like Playboy bunny suits, and they go like, "Why are you sexualizing me?" And it's like, well playboy bunny suits are sexual in nature like that's when you wear them they are sexual in nature there are some bits of clothing that are just sexual in nature right Mm -hmm. and the thing is is like i don't care how you dress over the age of 18 just when you're under 18 like just enjoy being a a child right yeah but in in zoe 101 like they did wear things that were like tight fitted clothing they got wet a lot they you know like it just well, it was, there was mm-hmm. like a stark difference between the nickelodeon yes yeah. and disney channel yes because not to say like disney channel didn't wear like mini skirts and tight clothing but like look at a lizzie mcguire compared to like uh so yes. 101 yes. they were a lot more clothed in lizzie mcguire than so 101 yeah there was a lot more layers and mm-hmm. I agree, like, because, like, when I look, the difference between the two is, like, I feel like Disney had their teenagers dressed way more appropriately, but still in very, well, until we got to Hannah Montana. I actually hate a lot of yeah. Hannah Montana, Montana outfits. <laughs> like, after that, I was like, what are we doing, Disney? But, like, before mm-hmm. that, like, a lot of the outfits were really cute and, yeah. and like, very stylish and very, like, you know, you know, style for the time and and Mm -hmm. but they were still appropriate for the children that were wearing them right yeah whereas like nickelodeon wasn't and i'm it's it's sad because it's like i feel like a lot of people watched nick because it was cool like that was the cool yeah they were like the cool channel Uh they were the cool like that's what the like cool kids watched nick because nick all of their shows were never really about like a lesson whereas like disney always had like a lesson Mm -hmm. in those episodes right like Lizzie McGuire was all about learning, you know, like yes. being growing uh-huh. up and learning and, you know, like sometimes Lizzie was wrong, you know, and sometimes she was right. And sometimes you related to her and, and all that stuff. Or like same with like Raven, you know, and <clears throat> it's just really sad with, with Nick. Um, though because of all of this stuff, there's been a lot of crazy conspiracies going on now. Yeah. <laughs> Always. I feel like. Well, I feel like once, like, <laughs> it feels like, like the Kate Middleton conspiracy theorists, once yes. that was over, yes. they jumped over to, like, the Nickelodeon. They did. Well, yeah. Because here's the thing. These, these are real people with real lives. Again, 
real mm-hmm. people with real lives. And and I feel like a lot of these people coming up with these conspiracy theories are just doing they're doing it for clout. They're doing it for clicks and views and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. and it should be disgusting. Right? Because like <laughs> one of my favorite conspiracies that's really fucking dumb. <laughs> Was for the, this? Who, oh. Was was the slime? Oh, I saw that. <laughs> Did we that. see the slime one? And like the I cons- think I did. It's a conspiracy saying that the slime was supposed to look like um, like um, milky like male white goop. stuff. Yeah, male mm-hmm. goop. That's what it was supposed. <laughs> except they could yeah. chroma key it out. They could they could green screen it out and make it a different color. I, okay, I did see that one. I did and I, I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh my god, you guys are fucking stupid. I that, that's a stretch because uh, the slime has been a thing for Nickel well had been a thing with Nickelodeon since like the 80s, almost the 80s, yeah. Yeah, and, and and slime is something that was very popular in the 90s, just throughout the 90s and mm-hmm. like the early 2000s. Like they had Gak as well too. I don't know if you remember. Yes, Gak. they did. We we mm-hmm. <laughs> me and my mom would make Gak at home, um. But like you know, like that yeah. slime was very popular. Like gross things were yeah. really popular at the time. Like you were not a kid in that time period without like wanting. Like you really wanted to get slime. Yeah. Like I remember, like I would I beg really my dad to, to like. I I really wanted to be I really wanted to go to like the Nickelodeon studios in Florida. Yeah. Because you know at that time they would like film some of the shows at the at Universal Studios and just knowing that you had the possibility of getting slime was like it was my dream. Yeah, like I really wanted to be slime so bad. I was like, I want that. I want a, I want that green stuff on me all over me. You know, I was like, did it happen? No, I just no. had Gak and that. So I was like, here you go. It's Nickelodeon. Yeah, well, and then people, like, I think it's so hilarious that people are like, well, they made it green, so they green screen it. And I'm like, you can do that with any color. I hate to break it to you. Like, yeah. like you, tell me that you don't know how this stuff works without telling me you don't know how it works. Because as someone who deals with like green screening things out all the time, it's it could you you could do it with any color. <laughs> it didn't have to be green. It's like, well, why was it green? It's like, well, because green like is is like that toxic color. Like, why is yeah. Mountain Dew green? Right? Like, it's it's like cool, like voltage, like like green. Like green was is just an icky color, and it goes with slime, you know. Like it, it being it also stands out from the orange of like the, yeah. the color of orange, right? Like mm-hmm. green and orange are great colors that go together. Yeah. Um, when you want to like convey uh, kind of this like icky, you know, like a nineties icky, like yeah, it just toxic like it, waste that's, type that's vibe. Not, like my mom would always call it like moco. That's like the Spanish word for like snot, like. Yeah, it looks like, like oh, snot to me. Let's be real. Like, yeah, it yeah, she's like, like why, why do you want that? It just looks like, se ven como mocos. That's what she would say. <laughs> it looks like, it's just like, oh, mom, it looks so cool. Yeah, that one, like, to me, that one was, a, like, a literal stretch. Like, that one was mm-hmm. a stretch. And it's so funny because people were like, that's a stretch. And then people in in the comments being like, no, you're just staying blind. And then, or you're a Dan Schneider defender. And it's like. Dan had nothing to do with the color of the slime. Like, he doesn't have power over that. I I don't think. He also, I guess, doesn't have power over the logo, it being a foot. You know? Oh, yeah, that was a thing, too. Uh I, okay, because, like, I know there were, like, very weird feet things in the shows. However, the, I feel like feet, like, footprints were very popular of the 90s as well. Yeah, like like nineties and two thousand, like like you know, I don't know how to explain this, but like the, like what was really popular were like ankle bracelets and like they toe were. rings mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like feet were kind of popular at the time in a non sexual way, right? Yeah, like, like it was decorating like your feet. another thing to accessorize, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. So like I feel like a foot kind of fit that. I feel like we were joking about it being a foot, and it'd be like, how oh, of course we all have feet fetishes because the little yeah, logo I feel was like, a foot. As far as Dan Schneider feet things go, when it looked like it took a turn for like a fetishy content was like iCarly, yes, um, Victorious, and then Sam and Cat. 
Yeah. Like the previous stuff, some of it, yeah, definitely weird, but those later Dan Schneider shows, those, uh, yeah, those are where it gets like super bad. And and mm-hmm. there's other rumors of things too, like floating around. And I really need people to stop hounding some of the other actors when yes. it comes to this stuff. If they don't want to talk on it, they don't have to. Like they don't they are victims. They are pot- even potential their potential victims are our victims. Mm-hmm. And you just it's none of your business. Like, they don't need to say anything to anyone that they don't want to. Like, you, just because, you know, Drake Bell comes out with his story doesn't mean that everyone needs to, because maybe not everyone's ready. Yep. Um, Actually, recently, um, I don't know his name, but he's the guy on Zoe 101 who played Reese, you know, like the, the, the hot one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He actually recently came out with his story. Um, though he said, dur- like he basically he was like, I don't owe anyone any type of story, but I'm gonna give mm-hmm. it to you anyways. But I'm gonna need you guys to stop harassing everybody else, right? Yeah. And he talked about how how he was groomed when he was 12 by his best friend's stepdad, and then how when he was 19. His um, his his uh, agent assaulted him, I think. Mm-hmm. And but it had nothing to do with Nick, though. So he talked about he's mm-hmm. like nothing had to do with my time on Nick. And he, but he yeah. did tell his story, and that's why he stepped away from acting was because of that, right? But he was like, yeah, if yeah. people are you know dealing with other things, like do not bother them, like leave them mm-hmm. alone, right? And it's just like. I know this is tea for a lot of you, but like, I don't know. To me, I feel like a lot of us are mourning in a way. Yeah, it does feel like that. And I feel like a lot of people who were not really big fans of Nick are just sitting here being like trying to profit off of it and not like Mm -hmm. really like having any empathy for anyone not just like the actors, but all of the kids who watch Nickelodeon. Actually, mm-hmm. actually, uh, I came across this TikTok, I think literally last night. The creator of Blue's Clues <laughs> made a TikTok about how upset and hurt she was by how all of this happened. Because while they were yeah, not a main like... part of Nick, they were part of Nick Jr. And she mm-hmm. and her heart hurts because she knows that all of the kids who have watched Blue's Clues, have been affected by this. Because... Yeah, I mean... Oh, go ahead. Like, I, fe- I feel like... Um, I mean, this whole discussion is largely on the live-action shows from Nickelodeon. Yes. But, like, so many of us grew up with, like, the cartoons as well. Like, starting from, like, Nick Jr. shows all the way up to, like, you know, Rugrats, Hey Arnold. Like, those shows just, like, shaped our childhood. Yes. Absolutely. And so we just kept following the trajectory of Nickelodeon. Okay, once SpongeBob rolled around, then they started, I feel, kind of focusing more on, like, the live action. So you would watch that and then transition into, like, the evening shows for the yes. cool kids. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. And yeah. it's, it's just really sad because, like, watching that TikTok of the creator of Blue's Clues talking, which I've never seen her before, um, and... I don't know, like, my heart hurt a little bit after watching it because, like, Mm -hmm. Blue's Clues was, like, I, as a child, loved Blue's Clues. Like, I was that first generation to have Mm -hmm. watched Blue's Clues. And, like, because I remember my mom telling me that, like, when Blue's Clues came out, like, I just fell in love with it. And we went to Universal Studio and they had, um, they had Blue's Clues stuff there that they hadn't released yet to, like, they hadn't released any Blue's Clues stuff to the public yet, right? And and so, we, like, I bought it. We we bought a shirt, and, you know, like, I love that shirt and stuff like that. So I was, like, huge fan of Blue's Clues, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, to know that other kids like me, you know, who grew up, you know, like, I couldn't imagine being also people who are, like, who are a part of Nick, seeing all of this stuff happen and knowing, like, like the creator of Blue's Clues, who cares a lot about children... Yeah. Seeing all the children that, you know, helped 
you know, like that she inspired or that she, you know, that grew with her show get hurt by these other shows from the same network. Right. I could, I, I wonder, I also wonder how the guy who plays Steve feels about it too. You know? Well, I did see he posted a TikTok just like, like checking in on people. Yeah. And then like people in the comments were like, oh my God, Steve, like it's been a week. Like, <laughs> can't believe it. Like, they were just uploading on his that. comment I'm not section. I lie. <laughs> love that he does that. <laughs> yeah um it's just it's just a lot like it's it's a lot because i think a a lot of people were just shocked by how gruesome it was with these live action shows and Mm -hmm. on top of that i i really think the way to prevent this kind of stuff from ever happening again is two things need to happen is we need better laws Yes. And or we only have shows for teenagers that are cartoons or minors in general. Mm-hmm. Because here's the thing is if we do animated shows only, they are less likely. They, there's no child. Like, do we really as a society need child actors? Do we really need that? Or can we just animate teenagers and children? And have them played by adults. Or they could actually still be played by minors and like minors. A lot of Mm -hmm. cartoons do that. And a lot of the actors that come from it don't end up like abused. (laughs) At least not to my knowledge. You know, like the actor for like Finn from Adventure Time grew up, you know, just fine. You know, all the Mm -hmm. Avatar, the last Airbender people grew up just fine. Like Toph and Aang. You know, you know, Dora was played by an actual child. A child, too. Yeah. Right. Because, like, I feel like they're because you're, you're not putting your expectations on the actors. You're putting them on the care, like the fictional characters that they're portraying. Right. But it's not mm-hmm. their real bodies. It's a fictional, like drawn character, you know. And I because I saw a comment saying that, like, do we really need child actors like that? Not really. We don't really need these live action shows. It's just, it's so, such a complicated issue. And at the same time, I feel like this should have always been a priority. Like the children's safety should have been always a priority. The fact that it wasn't is like, I just could not, I still cannot comprehend how they would allow like literal convicted, like, predators on set yes well and on top of that too i to add i saw a lot of people being like well what about the other adults that were on set and they didn't say anything or do anything and i'm like okay i need you i need to put this in perspective because i feel like a lot of people don't really understand hollywood and how this all works because somebody tried to do that to dan one mm-hmm. of the writers yep. did that to Dan. And you know what happened? He stayed doing what he was doing. And she never worked in the industry again. Mm-hmm. The adults well, it's the same set... thing with, like, mm-hmm. Go ahead. with Harvey Weinstein. He was doing so much worse, too. Like, hundreds of women. And how did he stay in power? Because he was just that powerful. People were scared to speak up yep. in the hopes to, like not lose their career yep like they were they would have been blacklisted back when he had the power that he did in that industry yeah and this is before the internet yes you know? mm-hmm. <clears throat> and i think that's a huge thing that people need to take into consideration it's before we had the internet like we have it today right like before the internet you know before we had the internet before we have it now you couldn't, like, who do you speak up to? You could speak up to law enforcement, yeah, but, like, how much of it's going to actually get done? How much of it's going to actually mm-hmm. spread and actually damage someone's career? Not really, you know? And, and like, I know, I know people will be like, well, you know, like, should have spoke up anyways because, like, you know, it's not, it's, it's worth their job and X, Y, and Z thing. And I'm like, you don't know that person's life because it's like, you know, it could be someone who, went to film school for years they still have student debt for film school and how 
like and they ha- they're in their dream job right now and if they tried to speak up they're blacklisted and and what they did all of that work for what you know well it was like the two female writers that they interviewed yeah but they took a single they had to split their paycheck yes they knew something was off mm-hmm. but you know they don't they just assume like, hey, this is how showbiz works. I don't want to lose my first opportunity like yes. in the door. So they just went with it. It was well, a- and then one of them sued him, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And then she's never worked in the industry again. Mm-hmm. Even though she, I'm pretty sure she won, right? Or did she? I don't I, remember. I don't remember the outcome. I just remember she didn't work in the industry ever again. Yeah. But Dan mm-hmm. still was there. Was still there. You know, for yep. years. So there. And, and that's the problem is that, like, you could speak up. But when you watch someone speak up and nothing's done, how, what are you supposed to do? Like, what, what are you supposed to do? However, here's the thing, though. Is, here's where I do my problem, like, where I, I place blame to, is the parents. The parents for not, like, watching their children more closely, right? Because there are children mm-hmm. who ended up leaving. You know, because yeah. like their parents spoke out, but that child still has the rest of their life ahead of them. You know, like they still, they still the rest of, they might not ever act in Hollywood again, but like, what are they really missing and losing out on? Right. Like they could go other avenues when you're an adult who's gone to college and has a degree and is working in the field. What avenues do you have? Because <laughs> you might still have student debt, you know, and whereas like children, like the the parents should be the ones really keeping eye on their children, and like yeah, I I feel like there's two kinds of like showbiz parents, like yeah. the ones that really do help keep their child safe and like on a good path. Kind of like um, I've always heard really good things about Miranda Crossgrove's parents. Yeah, and I mean she turned out great. Yeah, like she went to university. Mm-hmm, She's mm-hmm. still famous, but you know has been able to live her own life the way she wants to yep but then you have the parents that are kind of living through their child's like dream kind of like jenna mccurdy's mother that yeah. she detailed in her autobiography and oh yep or, she sounded like the literal worst person i'm kind of like uh drake bell's parents one is yeah, one and the like other one is the other because mother that as was well. That was insane to me. Like that, I think that's yeah. the thing that shocked me the the most out of the whole thing was just mm-hmm. that you know Drake's dad, like he he got that bad vibe from Brian. He like knew he's like this guy is not a good man. He is he needs to stay away from my son, right? Mm-hmm. And when Brian put that wedge in between Drake and his dad, and started putting like thoughts into his mom's head, right? And then you know. When when his mom was like, Drake doesn't want you to be his manager anymore to his dad. What his dad said was, keep him away from Brian. Whatever you do, keep Mm -hmm. him away from Brian. And Drake's mom's hatred for his dad was larger than her love and wanting to protect for her son. Mm -hmm. And that's fucking sad. And that, that is. that's heartbreaking. I'm like, how how could you like not like notice? Because like Drake's the fact that it was like mom noticed. Yeah, before. the girlfriend's mom that noticed and yeah. not his own mother is wild. No, it's so wild. I'm like, she knew in seconds something was up. And I agree. And like, why would you drop your child off at a adult man's house that isn't his mm-hmm. father? Like, to stay the night. That's so that's like that's like a recipe for disaster. Yep. I also okay. I guess, I guess the other thing that like shocked me too that was like crazy was Brian's pen pals with fucking. <gasps> oh my god! Uh, yes. What's his name? Oh, I can't. Re- I can't remember his name. But the uh, John. But the could... John. John Wayne Gacy. Yeah, John Wayne Gacy. Yeah. Like I was like, what? What? Oh Wait, God. nobody knew about this? Like, every, or did they? Did they know about this? Did the people in set well, know about this? Because if they knew about it, I would well, have been like, oh, excuse the, me? In the documentary, it, like, the kid from all that said that both him and the other parents, because they got a tour of the house. Yeah. They all saw it. How did the parents not, not think, like, hey, um, 
this is uh strange i'm like i'm like did this man he might have uh, let, let's be real has brian killed anybody I was like, damn, but like, have we looked into this? Being that fascinated with a serial killer who targeted young boys, that did not raise a f- What? Oh, and my other, my other favorite line was when, when Drake's dad tried to, like, be like, I don't know about this, this Brian guy, like, he's been really weird, and it's like, oh, he's gay, so you're probably just homophobic. Oh, yes. <laughs> I wanted to die. I wanted to die so bad. I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? That has nothing to do with it. That's, it's nothing. That's not like, oh, like it's so it's so weird. I was I. <sighs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> uh, um. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like I, I've always felt. Now as like an adult, I've always felt very strange seeing the showbiz parents and also like the the. Uh, family vloggers as well yes because it does feel very one-sided like it's just the adult that's benefiting financially and then at the behalf of the child yes well because there not... are some kids in showbiz who genuinely want to be there oh right? yeah mm -hmm. Dr drake was one of them mm -hmm. he genuinely wanted to perform right even going into drake and josh because a lot of people think that like oh he was being abused on drake and josh but like he literally says he wasn't and that it was kind of the thing that saved him is because it's something he genuinely wanted to do was was be an actor and act right um mm -hmm. and there are kids who genuinely want to do that same thing with josh yes. josh also genuinely wanted to act you know and i think that's fine if you're like my kid wants to go into acting let them do it right i mean i guess like, but be be like hawk's eye on them right yeah or even get them into like i don't know your local theater or something like that like mm -hmm. like there's so many ways to do it you don't have to go to hollywood um but like it, when it comes to family vlogs like it's a big reason i hate the family vloggers. i hate them i hate mommy vloggers because like right now there's a whole controversy on tiktok with um with um with Ren. The one kid? Yeah, the one Ren. little toddler girl? Yeah. Yeah. Ren mm -hmm. is her name. Yes. And it's it's like it's like horrible because like her the mom came out and she was like um she was like, We've talked to FBI and they've never yeah. they haven't found her on any of those sites. And I'm like, Girl, of course they haven't found her on any sites because you're providing it. Yeah. Also, that's not, I'm like, what do you mean you talked to the FBI and they looked? What do you mean by that? Because, like, here's the thing. It's the internet, okay? And now mm. with, like, things like AI, I wouldn't doubt that, that it's on someone's personal computer. Because, like, people aren't uploading uh -huh. it. They share it between each other. That's why they're weirdos. Like, they, they share that shit between each other, right? You have things like deep fakes and AI and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And you're mm -hmm. telling me that, like, posting your child eating a pickle is not weird like she's not dumb like she knows exactly dumb. what she's doing because she's done it so many times by now yes like she's very i mean i know the comments used to be on in her page and then she them off. deleted them i just blocked them yeah but you can still see the number of people who save those videos yeah who bookmark yeah and mm -hmm. it's, it's not a small amount either. No, and it's, it's like, a disgusting amount. And here's the thing. If I was a parent and I had any thought that even one person would be saving my child's video to do unspeakable things to, delete mm -hmm. it. They're all gone. We're yeah. done. We're done doing that completely. And I think, I think parents need to keep their children... <coughs> <clears throat> off public pages like uh, like yes. if you want to share within your facebook friends whatever it's your private facebook your private instagram whatever do that have fun you know go have at it that's what it's for not to make social media accounts and and to uh to to monetize your child's life is very mm -hmm. weird because there's no and there's no rules for it either no i mean it Hollywood is has been unregulated for so long. Where are the laws for like family bloggers? Clearly, there's not because then you have like, 
I don't know if you've kept up with like the Jody Hildebrand and Rudy Ruby Frankie stuff. From, yes, like, I've heard. Yes, I've heard about that. Yeah, like clearly the laws are not there yet to protect no. children that well, are part of like family vlogging channels. Allison Stoner has been from Disney has yeah. been advocating mm -hmm. for laws like that. Yes. For for kids on the internet, for family vloggers, <clears throat> they have gone to Congress and mm -hmm. I or, or they have gone to the government. Uh, I don't know where exactly, and they've spoken. They're speaking on mm -hmm. it, and that's what they've been using their platform for is to is to stand up for kids in the industry, not even just in Hollywood, but for the kids who are who are part of family vlogger channels. Because yeah. it's the same thing when I see like the the RV kids right mm -hmm. like the yes. rv life and i'm like that is so bad i'm just like i personally i'm like there's not enough room for like first of all your kids get no privacy whatsoever and i'm mm -hmm. a huge believer in that kids deserve some sort of privacy right like their own room their own space whatever right and and like i get in some circumstances you can't have that there's a lot of like poor families out there you know, and I, I totally get that, right? But, like, you don't need to be in your, like, your kids need, like, their own spaces sometimes, their own things. And then mm -hmm. also just, like, moving around all the time. Like, you don't have, yeah. like, a secure home, you know? And then you're also monetizing it as well. Like, they don't get any privacy that way. Well, I remember, <laughs> I didn't watch the ruby frankie's like youtube channel but mm -hmm. i do remember people pulling clips from her vlogs and yeah i think it was the son that ended up in jody hildebrand's um house yeah but um he had said that he didn't have any friends at school because all his friends used to make fun of the content that his mom used to put on oh. the youtube channel mm -hmm. And like the other, I think it was one of the daughters too was like, oh yeah, like nobody wants to talk to me because they watch me on, on the channel. So, I mean, they got bullied repeatedly by the classmates. Like, <laughs> does that not raise a red flag? But yeah, well, because like, like your home life is now exposed to everyone in your class To everyone. Too. And that lady used to publish like every single time they would wet the bed. If they did oh so, like she would like God. publicly like humiliate them on yeah, the YouTube and then, channel. Yeah, imagine going to school and then your classmates are like, Haha, I saw you wet the bed. Exactly. Yeah. You know, kids are ruthless. You know, you give them any sort of like ammo like that and they will, oh, they will shoot. So, yeah, that's it's it's something that's always bothered me. Mm -hmm. Along with like people like randomly filming people in public that, yeah. Yeah. like along those mm -hmm. lines as well like going up to them and like interviewing random people or um you know and like not even asking before like they just they just like they just start filming and like hey can i ask you a few questions right on the spot like that's yeah. that's it's not a not a like hey we're gonna be filming this thing would you like to participate Mm -hmm. right like they're already filming and that's something that has always like bugged me is like using strangers for content because it's like mm -hmm. they're not they're just trying to live their lives they're not your content and i feel like that we have we start to live in this world of everything's content constantly mm -hmm. everything yes. needs to be content and i think i actually i honestly think that's tiktok's fault I think TikTok mm -hmm. has kind of ruined that because I feel and like, you know, I love TikTok, but I feel like everyone on TikTok, no one is just there to watch TikTok. Everyone's there to make content and try to be famous is what it feels like. Right. Yeah. Um, because the bars is so much lower for it. You know, like you can all you have to do is like film yourself on your phone and then, you know, it's just short, quick and easy. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's really ruined a lot of social media of like everything has to be content. And it's such an unhealthy mindset our society lives in because mm -hmm. like even going to like going places like I don't want to be randomly filmed, you know, yeah. like, I don't want to be randomly taken photos of and then, you know, people post on the Internet 
<coughs> Sorry. Let's they post up. on the internet <laughs> to make fun of? Mm-hmm. <coughs> You've been talking too long now. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I know, I'm uh, so, I think, like... like... What I hope that these stories bring out is... And I know poli- I can't even trust politicians completely because look at the shit show that we have when they're more they're more focused on banning tiktok than actually providing helpful legislation (sighs) but like because if they really cared about about our data they would exactly they Uh. would literally make laws about the data stuff not about banning tiktok oh my god i i I really do hope that there is if it's not the politicians like making legisl- legislature to protect children in, in like entertainment industries i hope that it's the studios themselves holding yes. themselves themselves accountable and at a higher much higher standard yes when it comes to hiring practices and also like the way like there's gotta be stricter ways to i don't provide there's not only the children's safety but like be there for them on an emotional like like get them therapists way, or like, something i don't yeah, know like get them an approved therapist like I, there has to be just much more emphasis on like giving them the childhood that they deserve but also mm-hmm. knowing that this is not a normal scenario for a child to be so they will need extra support yeah in order to like you know live a healthy and happy because life i don't even know kids, like some kids they 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 want to act they want to be actors. Yes. i know mm-hmm. as a kid i wanted to act i wanted to perform and stuff like that i it's something i always love to do so like mm-hmm. you know i you know like for me you know i've always loved doing that stuff you know but not every kid does right mm-hmm. some parents look at their children and they're the holiday they see is dollar signs yes uh-huh it's just I feel sad. like it's becoming more of an issue with social media because now you don't even have to go through getting like an acting agent or anything. You can just, you just post. post them on TikTok. Yeah, you just post, post away, post them on TikTok, post, you know, whatever, and make sh- you know shit ton of money. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Like you're always making a ton of money, and it's like, wow, cool. And yeah. they don't even have like the what was it the Coogan account. Oh, well, that's a different thing, yep. Yeah, they don't even get that because, like, Mm-mm. they don't fall under those laws like that. Because, like, child actors, they get bank accounts where they get 15% of their paycheck goes into that account for them when they turn 18. Children of family vloggers and mommy vloggers, they don't get anything. They don't get any of that. Literally zero. Literally nothing at all. And it's just like it's it's aggravating. It's so aggravating to me. It is. Um, but yeah, is there anything else we'd like to talk about before we wrap up? Um Well I'll be I'm gonna be going to Miko Expo next week. Yay! <laughs> yeah, Miko Expo's coming up and like a yes. month for me. Yeah, it'll be back to back weekends, uh Miko Expo weekends and then and then me will be another Miko Expo. Yeah, with me. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. We could take we could take photos together. It'll be fun. It'll be great. I know. Wait, I, just wait I'll get a body pillow and <laughs> so you can hold it. With me. This is a VTuber. And it's like it's not even not even Miku. And it's like, but it could be Miku. You don't know. It could be. No, this is yeah. my OC pure pure. <laughs> <laughs> so of course, pure pure. And my OC pure pure. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But, uh, I'm excited. Yeah. Very excited for Miku Expo. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for me too, because this will be our first Miku Expos ever. <laughs> and I'm so excited to be there and see them live and be like, oh my god. Oh my god. I, I feel like I'm going to cry. <laughs> oh, I know I'm going to fucking cry. I, it just sucks <laughs> because, like, uh, from Miku Expo 2020. I feel like they were probably going to do the, like, Wawaka tribute. 
Mm-hmm. They never got to do that for the for Miku Expo because yeah. they did it for Magical Mirai, and the Miku Expo happened, but then COVID happened. <laughs> and yeah, then, and then they canceled it, which made me sad because I knew I I would have bawled like a baby, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm gonna bawl like a baby when I get there. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna I'm gonna get there, you know, and I'm gonna. I'm going to bawl like a little little baby because I'm going to be like, oh, my God, it's Miko. It's, oh, my God, it's Kaido. Oh, my God, it's Miko. Oh, my God, it's Red. Like- yeah, I feel like <coughs> during the introduction, I'm going to okay. be like, oh, I, uh, we'll see if I have a voice. After- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> after honestly. Next week. Oh, oh, and then also uh, they, they're releasing Nendroids for Sermon of Evil and Daughter yes. of Evil. Yes, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So that is exciting as well, and I love that the official names are them are Servant of Evil Len and Daughter of Evil Ren. Uh huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and it's so funny because I did see a couple people being like, "You call them by their actual names, really, and N Alan," and I'm just like, "I'm just gonna go to bed now, I guess." Like, I just, I'm so done with this. I'm like, this. They're both. There, I, I knew it, yeah. I was like, I, I knew it. It's like, like that lady, like the Karen, who's like, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Have you ever seen those videos? <laughs> no. Oh my god, there's a lady on TikTok, and she's like a Karen. Oh and, well. And, and well, like she, she plays a Karen. Her name's like Teresa. Oh, okay. okay. She's a Teresa though. Um, <laughs> but she's Teresa. <laughs> she's so funny though. She so she plays like a Karen character, and she'll like take a bite of something, and she'll be like, you'll uh-huh. be. You know, uh, Karen at Taco Bell or something like that, and she like take a oh, bite. Okay, and she's like, okay. as she's chewing, she's like, "I knew it, I knew it." And she'll like keep chewing on it, and, she, and she'll oh. take like another bite, and then she'll like, "I knew it." <laughs> they didn't put sour cream in it. <laughs> I told them oh, take another bite. God. I told them to put sour cream in it. I knew it, and like she'll just Dude. keep eating it, and I'm just like, it's so funny. I mean, we t- I told you, good smile. When they released the Nendroid Petite, they did not market them as Alan and Rillian. They said Lin, Rin and Len. <laughs> yes. They, uh, yeah, That's yeah. exactly and, how they're marketing and they're them. going to market Rabbit Hole Miku as Hatsune Miku version Rabbit Hole. Exactly. That's exactly how, that's how they're marketed because that's who they are. Yep. They just marketing like 101. <laughs> Let's be real. People are more likely to, to find these nendroids as Rin and Len than as Rillian and uh Alan. Yeah. I mean it's such a dumb argument. It's like y- you know exactly. It's like it's still who dumb cares? just them portraying a different character. And at the end of the day, who cares? Who cares? I, I that's the thing that bothers the shit out of me because I'm like, who cares? Like if they someone calls them Rin and Len, they're still Rin and Len. Like that's fine. Like if you yeah. call them if you call them you know, Rillian and Alan. I don't care if you call them that. That's fine. Yeah, I don't mean, that's, come attacking that's me too. for calling them Rin and Len. <laughs> yeah, because to me, they're always because when I watched when I watched that series or w- watched the music videos for the first time, mm-hmm. that was before any of the chronicles were out. That was before yeah. any of that series was out. It was just the daughter of evil and the servant of evil. That was it. So they were just Rin and Len back then. If people don't realize that because they were not alive. <laughs> they were not live or they were being birthed. Or they were babies. They were coming out like, of the dude, womb. They were being they like, were being chucked out. They were chunk being evacuated of, like, the from the womb. <laughs> evacuated. <laughs> like there's a whole chunk of the vocaloid like fandom that remembers the time where <coughs> the evil Evilius Chronicles were just like <coughs> The inception has not begun, okay? It, like, we just did not because know the, these characters the, by their the names. The creator literally had no clue how popular it was going to be. They, yeah, he just I mean, was like, you? I'm going to write these silly little songs, <laughs> and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to publish them, and I'm not going to expect anything out of it. And then, like, everyone loved it. And then he's yeah. like, oh, I guess I'll make more. So yes. he made more. Exactly. And that's how it went. That's how it always went. And then they eventually they came out with like 
with the, the stage play and like the mm-hmm. series the light i think it was light novel and it's just like yeah, yeah, yeah that stuff all came after the inception of the the songs and that was mm-hmm. not that was not intentional he did not go i'm gonna create this masterpiece and we're gonna have all of this lore and everything i think he just made the two songs and went huh i guess i'll make more <laughs> yep <laughs> That's literally how it was. Anyways, I think I was going to wrap it up before I, like, destroy my voice. So Yeah, follow us on social media. Yeah! Uh, at Jojo Podcast. You can also follow yeah. us at our individual um, social media as well. Yeah, remember, still Keep up with, um, yeah. And Laura News for me. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Goodbye. I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye! Goodbye.